Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And you know what? I started this master lighting in 3D course on Patreon where you will learn all of this stuff. So if you want to know how you can make renders like these ones, I think my Patreon is the right place for you. And of course, I will share assets and scene files and all of the good stuff. All right, and be sure to save 25% on an annual subscription on my Patreon if you subscribe until the 8th of February 2021, all right? So just be fast enough. All right, in class one, two, three, we talked about the light fundamentals, but I think now it is time to just build a complete scene, something like this or like that, also like this. Okay, so you can see some beautiful night scenery, some sunrise. We will also talk about how you can make a beautiful desert landscape. But of course, the focus is on lighting. All right, so you will learn how you can really spice up your renderings with beautiful dramatic lighting. So this will be the topic of class four on my Patreon. But of course, for you guys on YouTube, I have also something special. So we will just keep it a little bit more simple, but you can see See in these ones they are also really beautiful so if you want to know how you can light some beautiful objects in a really dramatic way this is the right training for you all right so i think we just hop into cinema 4d and try to make a light like this one or a scenario like this or like that i'm still not sure maybe we will go for this one because this is just, I think maybe the most beautiful. It's up to your liking, but I think I will go with this one. One last thing, just be sure if you really want to know all of my knowledge on lighting, if you want to have the whole master lighting in 3D course, be sure to check my Patreon, all right? So a second last thing, I'm sorry. If you really like this training and you learned something today, just be sure to subscribe to this channel and um, also leave a comment if you like. But now let's just hop into Cinema 4D and have some fun. Fun, all right all right welcome to cinema 4d your favorite 3d software at least it is mine all right so you can see i already built a simple scene here and of course i will share this one on patreon but for you guys on youtube i will just go quickly through it and we will build parts of it by ourselves just believe me this is no rocket science all right but i will take your hand and lead you through the whole setup okay so maybe we will talk first about some of the assets so this one obviously i didn't build this one by myself i'm not so deep in into modeling and it would be just too time consuming. So let me show you where I got this from. And let me also show you where I got my textures from. So sometimes you build your textures, your materials by yourself, but obviously there are really great material packs out there. And sometimes you don't really have to build a marble or brushed metal from scratch. All right. So let me show you where I get my assets from. All right. So maybe let me start here. My minifactory.com scan the world. This is just an awesome site. If you need like these beautiful heads. All right. Just be sure when you click on them you have a license for it so this one seems to be a creative common license so this is great to use all right i just went through this and picked some of these heads I used this one of the Jesus, this one of the Venus, and yes, just be sure to grab your assets. And of course, feel free to use your own head models if you have something crazy good like this one, all right? And maybe one more tip if you need HDRIs, this one is a good site for you. In our scenario this time, we won't use HDRIs, but just wanted to give you a hint where I got my assets from. So of course, there are also free HDRIs out there. So, so if you are really into free stuff, HDRI Haven is the right place for you. So I use these ones all the time and I think they're just awesome. Also be sure to search in your search bar for free IES lights. All right. So in this training, we will use IES lights and I found this one from Leo Moon Studios and I just love these ones. Okay. And they are free. So be sure to download them and send them a big thank you. All right. Let me quickly talk about materials. So I really like to use these packs from Grayscale Gorilla. I think they are just awesome. Also, you can find beautiful materials on Polygon, of course again polygon but hey they are just awesome so search for the metals whatever you need so you could use like a scratch metal for the floor or a marble just like i did so feel free to go to this site also i can recommend textures.com they also have these pbr materials so so just search for example for a marble and you will find beautiful stuff here so of course you can also put this crazy cool textures on your floor all right one last recommendation in my camera i use LUTs. all right so if you need crazy cool let's go to visioncolor.com they were recommended to me by david Ariev, and i think they are just awesome all right so much fun to play with these ones i will also show you how you can use LUTs in your scene and also just be sure to follow Marcus Gonzo 3D on Instagram. This is the brain and the muscle behind 3D Bonfire. That's me. And 
just be sure to stay up to date with my stuff and talk to me and show me your art, for example. All right, so let's continue in Cinema 4D. All right, so let me just quickly go through the basic scene and then we will concentrate ourselves on the lighting because this is the most interesting and important part about this scene. So you can see in this null, which is called Dionysus, after the hero here, I have another null, which is called Cylinders. And inside of it, these are just my decorative elements around him. So for now, we can just get rid of this one temporarily. We have another null, which is called Light Rig Dionysus. Inside of it, I have three IES lights. All right, so let me just quickly go through them. Let me just quickly deactivate these ones and also get rid of the other light sources like these ones. All right, so now the scene is perfectly dark. You just have to think about how you want to light your object in a most dramatic way. So maybe I just duplicate this one. Let's call this one IES new. Okay, and you can see you just go around your object and just search for a nice angle on it. Let me just do something that is not so great. Of course, you could go here and just make a frontal light on his face. Now uh, you can already see this looks super boring, all right? So basically all I can say about this is that it is just ugly, all right? So maybe for now I just uncheck the camera so I can get out of it, but we will keep this one as our render view. Okay, so you can see I just go around my model and search for something that is dramatic and impactful. And it's always nice to have dramatic shadows on your object. So for example, this one is already a nice placement. So now the face is lit in a beautiful way and we have these nice shadows on top of it. This is all about your feeling as an artist where you want to place these lights. Let me just rotate it 90 degrees here. Let me try another scenario, maybe from this side. Okay, so this can also be interesting. If you just combine it, for example, I just duplicate it by holding down STRG and dragging it and rotate this one like 180. And you can see this one also looks quite interesting, right? Right now they have the same power, but you can go into your attributes and make this one, for example, to 300. Let me just see if I can place it even in a more interesting way. Okay, I like this one. And now the other one is more like a fill light, right? So you can be subtle with this one, put it to 40. Just give it a hint of light here. This is basically how you have to decide as an artist how you can sculpt with light in the most interesting way. Okay, so maybe we will also want to put the light on top of it. All right, and you can see here, and this is already a pretty nice solution with these three lights, one from the left, from the right, and from the top. But of course, you can just mix this one up to your liking, okay? So obviously, you won't need this one, so maybe this is what you will prefer. You can go for, okay, I wouldn't do that, but you can go with this one, mix it with this one, or combine it with this one, whatever you like and what you feel will be fitting for your scene, okay? But maybe we should also also talk about the nature of this light. So this one is a special light, okay? It's not just an area light, it is an IES light. So let me tell you how I set up these lights. Therefore, just as a demonstration, I activated just the IES light from the left, all right? And now I go to store render buffer. And now we compare this one with your standard area light, okay? So let me just give you a demonstration here. So now I have an area light in my scene. I just rotated 90. Let's just place it where I have the IES light. Okay, I just make it similar in size here. Okay, the position is a little bit off. So let me just put it here. And let me just show you how boring this area light looks. Okay, so I think this one needs to be a bit brighter. Let's put it to 300. Actually, it looks quite good. But you can see the IES light is way more directional and you can be way more specific with this one. So the light fall off is really concentrated on this area while the area light is lighting everything here, okay? It is even going to the floor here and actually the area light is going in a 180 degree angle from here, okay? So therefore you will get a more boring overall light which has its scenario so often I really like to use area lights but in this case I want to go with the IES lights. So let me just show you once more the IES light really concentrated here and this is just way better for art direction and to be really specific with it. So let me just finally show you how I set up this beautiful IES light. All right, so I deactivated all my light, perfect dark here and now it is time to go to the magic button. It's called Octane IES light. That came with a surprise, right? So you weren't suspecting that. Rotate this light here. All right, so you can see nothing here, but let's just go into the light. Let's go to distribution image texture. 
and inside of it, this box is asking for a file name IES. All right. And I already showed you the IES that I like to use. So do I have it here? Yes. Download this pack, send them a big thank you or donate something. And then just be sure to go to your content browser, navigate in the hierarchy to your place on your hard drive. Okay. And inside of it, you will have these crazy cool IES files. Also PNGs, we don't really need them. So maybe I should just kill them. But for now, you can see you have a really nice selection of IES lights and maybe we just try something. So how about this one? Defined diffuse, just put it there, say none. So all right, I already like this one way better than the area light with the 180 degree fall off. So you can see now the light is coming out with a certain direction. And I think this is just amazing. All right, so maybe let's try another one. So go for the star IES light. And I think this one will be a bit crazy. Now you can't see it here. But of course, the light fall off will also put something on the floor and stuff. But I want to have something more directional. So let's try the tight focused. All right. And I think this one is fitting perfectly for our scene. So you can already see the IES light is working nicely in the scene. Maybe one more thing about IES lights. They have this beautiful pattern inside of it. And to really get this pattern in your scene, it is best habit to make your IES light really small. All right. So this one is 200 by 200. Therefore, you won't see anything of the pattern. So I would suggest to put this one to one by one. Now go into your IES light and maybe get rid of surface brightness. Now it is strong again. And you can see the shadow is already way more focused here. So let me just make this one stronger. So just check how sharp the shadow is here in comparison to let me just go to store the render buffer make it back to 100 by 100, for example. And you can see now it is getting more soft. Let's put it to 500 by 500. And now it is really diffuse. All right. So whatever you need in your scene, just be sure you adjust the light size and therefore you will have influence on the shadow quality. Okay. Now I just put this one back to one by one and maybe I will just show you how you can really see this pattern better. So let me just put a wall back here, for example. Let's make it bigger. Let's put this cube maybe here. I don't know. Let's just put it on the floor. Let's just, as a good habit, give it some fillet. All right. So now let me just put this IES light straight to the wall. And now you can really see this light pattern fall off. All right. So just put it close to the wall. Let me just, because this is so beautiful, check one more of them. So go back to your content browser and let me just go through it. I think I'd like to see this one. Okay. I guess this one will be crazy. Okay. So also a nice possibility to light your scene. But of course, in our case, we want to have something more focused like we had it before. All right. And you can see this is basically what I did here. So this is my scene setup. I have three IES lights, top, left, right. And let me just check the strength of them. So the top one is set to 80. So really subtle light here. Maybe we can also decrease this one to have just a hint of light. The left one is 250 and the right one is 400. Okay, so this one looks interesting, but now I just want to combine it with other lights. All right. And therefore, my magic trick is to introduce surfaces with a luminant texture on it. Okay, so I just built these little lamps here with a bright luminant surface and underneath it I have my IES light to give it more direction plus the surface light will give it a more diffuse light combined with the more specific angle of the IES light. This is just a beautiful lighting scenario. So let me just show you how the scene will look without the IES lights. All right. So you can see soft shadows from all of these angles. Maybe to be honest, this is too strong. Okay. So let's just go there. Let's go into my material. This is the emission. So let's put this one down to a thousand, for example, let's make it more subtle. So now we have some beautiful ambient light from all of these angles. And I think I just want to store the render buffer. And now my trick is to combine it with IES lights. Okay. So just see how beautiful the IES lights work in conjunction with the surface lights. All right. So this is a beautiful lighting scenario, but maybe you want to just have the IES lights on this head, for example. So maybe you feel like the ambient light from these light surfaces is just too much for it. So let me just see how this one is looking. Store the render buffer. Now combine the 
lamps again with it so you can see this will make it just a little bit more dull maybe so if this one is distracting you you could go to your object and let's say this one will have an octane tag on it let's go inside of it and use some light linking here so let's just pick the light 4 for example and now this is telling octane lights with the id 4 won't affect the head okay so why don't we just go into this material go inside of it and let's give this one light id 4 and now you can see this luminant material won't affect the head anymore so whatever you like you have all the possibilities right at your fingertips and uh, i think combining ies lights with light surfaces is just a strong technique all right guys i think this is it for the youtuber lesson here of course the lesson 4 on patreon will be way more in depth so we will build some more complex scenes with more lights and just do some awesome stuff here all right so so much to teach so much to learn i really hope to see you there on patreon anyway i hope you learned something and sharpened your sword your skills thank you so much for listening see you next time bye guys